When Nezreen and Cody found each other, they were really deeply in love really fast. It was something that everyone around him could see and everyone knew about it. If I saw Nezreen and Cody, they may be holding hands and just smiling at each other. It's easy to see where Nezreen would have fallen hard for Cody. He was, you know, is obviously a good-looking guy, funny guy, well-loved, well-liked, and just adored her, just worshiped the ground she walked on. He would do anything in the world for Nezreen and to protect Nezreen. They were very career-oriented. They were very uh, high achievers academically. They could uh, do some things together that meant that they could study together, work together. If Nezarin could have, I think she would have taken all of her courses with Cody. He was just tickled pink that someone loved him and he had this woman in his life. You could tell they loved each other just from the pictures, the way they looked at each other, the way that she would look at him. Even today when she talks about him, you knew that he was someone special. It was it was something that they were thinking that was not going to happen, and it, it did happen. When you see Nazarene and Cody together, they look like they should belong together. They, they look like a, a perfect young couple that is ready to start their lives together. November 12, 2012. Harris County detectives are interviewing Nezreen, the widow of murder victim, Cody Beavers. Nezreen is certain that it's her father that has killed her husband. The police eventually came to believe Nezreen and say, you know, okay, let's get some evidence behind it. And one of the ways we can do that is uh, we'll run a sting on your dad. We'll let you call him and see what kind of evidence you can elicit. This was very shortly after Cody was murdered. And Nezreen, at this point, is broken. It's difficult for her to function. Nezreen goes back a couple of days later. And so they get her in a room, they call him up. The original plan was to get Ollie so mad on the phone that he would say what he had done and, uh, you know, come clean. Hello? He sort of smelled out the trap, I think, and realized, eh, something's going on. So he started pushing her buttons, and she started pushing his buttons, and all of a sudden, she was screaming at him. She went off. I mean, she was very angry. I don't think anybody had any idea of the sort of rage, terror, and anger that Nezreen had. I can't blame her. She is so devastated over Cody's murder. This was her one, her one person that she wanted to be with for the rest of her life. And her father took him from her. So the sting operation totally backfired. Ali Ersan grew up in Jordan in a traditional Sunni Muslim family with very radical extremist set of views. Ali Ersan came to the United States in the late 1970s under a student visa and went to a college in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where he met Robin Dahl. When she testified in the trial, Robin told the jury of their first encounter where because of her disability and her being blind, Ali led her behind the building. He raped her. She was forced to stay with him. Her family was threatened to be killed if she didn't stay with him. Eventually, she was forced to marry him. And they had four girls, Nasima, Nazreen, Nadia, and Nida. And then when Shmu came into the picture and Ali married her as his second wife, they had eight more children. 
The reason Nazreen and Nadia, biological mother, had left is because one of their older sisters had married a man who was not the right Muslim. The oldest Urshan daughter, Nasima, had fallen in love with someone that Ali did not approve of. He was Shia. And Ali was raised and believed that they should only be with Sunni. She married him without the father's permission, and he killed him. And so eventually Robin took her daughter and left. He claimed self-defense, and he did get away with it. It was just very alarming to, to think that he was that evil of a person. It's hard to imagine a father having that kind of power over a child, having that kind of power to make that kind of decision in someone's life, because we just don't look at life like that in the United States.